Well, after scrubbing out at yesterday's regional, I finally realized why this format's so garbage. I thought everybody was just, I don't know, coping and talking out their yin-yang, but this format's actually garbage. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the scrubbiest of the most, Avril R32 here, and destroy the ever-living scrubbable boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher, the 1500 ladder. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Thank you, as always, for all the love and support. So, let's just dive right on into this. This format's dog water. Now, I talked to a couple of my friends about this to really kind of get a vibe, because... Going into this regional, I really didn't know how well or how bad I was going to do with Light Force Runic. And once I beat the two garbage rogue decks and I lost the two Ubel decks, and then I just pretty much gave the mirror match opponent the win because I'm like, I'm not dealing with this crap. Uh, I realized that this format's dog water. And but I started talking to like other players at the event and talked to a couple of my friends. And one of my friends made a good point. Rob was like, I asked him, Do you hate this format? He goes, Yes. And I'm like, please explain why. He says the problem with the format right now is that everything is Fiend Smith, like all Fiend Smith all the time. That's number one. That engine's very expensive, still, even after Banlist. Number two, if you lose the dice roll in game one, the opponent is most likely going to set up a board that you can't out because you're pretty much just locked out of playing the game. Think of something like Brandy, where they gimmick puppet lock you. Think of something like Runic Stone, where they just lock you out with Floodgates. Think of even decks just like you bell that don't necessarily lock you per se but they just put up so much negation on the board even with cards like baron and apo banned they're still putting up a bunch of negation because they have things like varudos which is a rank 10 exceed but it's an omni negate and it can pop cards and then you have a technically an omni negate in the form of disarray that yes it's technically harder to make pre-rage of the abyss because we don't have lacrim of the scarlet shadow or crimson tear whatever it's called here in the tcg but it's still easy to make regardless, just how, depending on how you sequence your plays. And it can play around things like Dark Ruler because it's like a hot red dragon archfiend abyss or bane, whichever one, that negates a card. Because you chain something else to the Dark Ruler like a spell or trap, then you can chain the Disarray to negate the Dark Ruler. So even things like Dark Ruler and potentially evenly match, depending on how many negates they have up doesn't help you win the game. And I'm sure some people are going to talk about the 275th YCS. I didn't watch any of that because I'm so over Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly, right now. Um, and so he explained that to me. And then my other friend walks up and he says, it's just all Fiendsmith all the time. Like, we need a ban list now like the OCG has where pretty much all the Fiendsmith cards are at one minus the fusions. Obviously, we have the Lacrima fusion ban, but they don't have the fusion ban in the OCG, but they have Engraver and Tract at one. And so we've gone from people hating on Snake Eyes, that got hit, but now we still have other issues in the form of Fiendsmith, and you have these decks just locking you out of the game. The other thing that my friend also talked about was that if you're not getting locked out in game one, and you do win that dice roll, there's the potential that you're going up against a deck that just hand traps you out of the game and then just obliterates you on the crackback. Something like Tempai that can play 20 plus hand traps. And I'm just like, that's crazy. Like... It didn't hit me until that moment why people were complaining about like the regional size. Like we had 302 players. Typically for Kissimmee regionals, we can get upwards of 400 plus players at these regionals if enough people show up. Now granted, we also had the hurricane and things like that, but we had 302 players. At the last time we had a Kissimmee regional, the one I came in 10th place out with Tempai, we had like, my buddy told me 320? Yeah, 320. I had to freaking close my eyes and think about that like you know this when we're thinking hard I'm still kind of exhausted from the trip back but yeah 320 players and something else that my other friend said shout out to Valley D because this has really been weighing on my mind he's like man after that February YCS that we were getting in 2025 in Orlando I think I'm gonna sunset the game I'm like what do you mean you're gonna quit the game he's like yeah I'm like why do you hate this format? What's going on? And he said, bro, I'm tired of every three to four months feeling like I got to spend 500 plus dollars on the next course set just to be competitive. And something that I overheard players talking about, granted players were still registering for the regional. It hadn't even started yet, but there were two players who were like, man, the turnout for this regional is small. And someone else said, yeah, man, like this is what happens when Konami doesn't fix their game. They really need to fix their game. This format's bad. And I'm like, I thought this format was pretty good. Like, yeah, there's issues. Like, Ubel's a good deck. But, like, there's always going to be a best deck to be or a meta deck, right? And so I'm like, 
what's going on here? And so now I realize after getting my cheeks clapped, <laughs> pause, that, yeah, this format's not good. And even one of my opponents who was on Ubel, he's like, yeah, I'm honestly just hoping to get my invite now so that I don't have to play in a post Rage of the Abyss toxic format with things like Mulcharmy and Azamina cards and all the rest and whatever. And I'm like, I knew Rage of the Abyss was going to be rough, but now I'm like, yeah, that makes more sense why, uh, why people are hating this format. And man, I don't see us getting a ban list anytime soon. And even one of my subscribers in a video where, um, I forget what I was talking about. I think I was talking about whether or not you should buy Rage of the Abyss. And they're like, yeah, this format's going to be crap for another three months. And I'm like, how so? It's not going to be that bad. Now I'm like, yeah, now that I've kind of read the room, it's rough. It's really bad. And as someone who's been playing this game competitively for 16 years, December will actually be 17. Man, it really got me wondering, like, how much longer I'm going to be playing this game competitively. Like, I feel like at the end of the day, I think I would want 20 years under my belt. That I can hang my hat up on the wall and say, you know what? 20 years, it's been a great run. Seeing the game evolve a lot. You know, that's where we end things, right? But... <sighs> to see now what the format is that really nothing's changed and then especially post rage of the abyss we're gonna go back to what it was before most likely like you is still gonna be the best deck in the room but i think that snake eye azamina is definitely gonna be that second best deck in the room and it really is like leaving a sour taste in my mouth like, I'm still going to go to the YCS in February, but, like, there's still so much I want to accomplish in this game before I quit. Like, I would love to, at the very least, make day two of a YCS or top or win, you know, make day two of nationals, you know, not really go to Worlds because it's usually in Japan. And obviously, not every player is going to win nationals. Not every player is going to win a YCS. But those are things that I would love to accomplish. And it's a damn shame to see my friends, like, getting out of the game, especially Valley D, who's not only a great friend, but also has become more like a coach. Like, I've learned a lot from this guy. And, like, he talked about how he's, like, really having to convince himself to go to locals. He feels like his time is better well spent doing other things. And I don't know, man. It really got me thinking, like, God, this format's actually kind of dog shit. And I've seen a lot of people on YouTube talking about, like, issues with the product and things, how they can change with that. But... It's not a product issue at the end of the day. That is an issue, but like, look, that's not going to change. Back in 2010, when we first got Pot of Duality and Duelist Revolution, still one of the best sets of all time, guess how much Pot of Duality was? And it was a secret rare, $100. At least, thank God, at least we have no, no more short prints in core sets. Duelist Revolution it was a normal core set, but you had to deal with potential short prints. Guess what got short print? At least I'm pretty sure it did. Pot of Duality. You could only get it as a secret rare. It was crazy, Sugar Boo Bear. So at least things have improved in that regard. And now with the new policy documents, that's kind of left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Because what they changed about public versus private knowledge is kind of asinine. Because they're like, you are allowed, as public knowledge, you're allowed to ask your opponent what a card does in the game whether or not it's in their deck, right? But then it's like, for private knowledge, you can't ask your opponent, like, what the defense points of a face-down monster are if, say, like, you book a wounded on the previous turn. Since it was the previous turn, it's now a new turn. They, they don't have to tell you, but yet if you know what the card is, you can just look it up on Nexus in offline mode. And, like, the fact that you can ask your opponent what any card in the game does, it makes me worried that put... Actually, it makes me know for a fact, because this player base can sometimes be toxic, that players are going to slow play. Like, they're going to be like, oh, 30 seconds left on the clock. What does Bicesteel Lubelion do? What does that level 10 Bicesteel with the big old eyeball do that nobody plays? What does Sky Scourge Norealis do? Like, obviously, you can call a judge on that, but... To have to deal with that crap is just, no one wants to deal with that. Even in round one of the regional, the guy I was sitting next to was playing Runic. And his opponent was like giving him a hard time apparently. So he had to call a judge over. Two judges end up coming over to deal with the situation. And at one point I overhear the argument where they're like, the, the Runic player says, 
you made a verbal breath of a sigh, and so I assumed that you were okay with the effect. And I'm like, are we getting to the point where just <sighs> means that you're okay with an effect occurring in the game state? Like, uh, it makes me sick of it. Like, it really makes me not want to play. Because this is why I don't want cash prizing. Could you imagine if shit like that happened and like $10,000 are on the line? I don't know why people don't understand that. Because they're like, we're all adults. And I'm like, these two man-childs apparently can't play the game. And it, it, it just makes me frustrated, you guys. I'm not going to do a deck profile on my deck because it's literally just my build from Locals that I did the other day. If you want to go watch it, go watch it. The deck is dog shit. If you're playing White Forest, just play Snake Eyes. It's just better. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm a competitive player. Maybe I need to play more casually for a while, although I hate playing casually because all the casual decks I look at on YouTube are just garbage. Like, call me an ass. Call me what you want. But I'm a competitive player. I've been playing competitively almost 17 years now. I want to win. I want to do well. I want to get better because I do enjoy the game. At the same time, I don't enjoy this shit. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. What do you think? Is there something I'm missing? Is there a point that I didn't discuss? Let me know all that more. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.